To set the encoding resolution, you go into Main Menu, Camera, and Encode. Now, in the Encode menu, there are two columns here. The left one is for what's called a mainstream, and the right is called substream. Mainstream is what gets recorded on your DVR for the full resolution of your camera's sensor, while the right one, the substream, is a lower resolution stream for remote viewing, let's say on a phone, tablet, or on the computer when you're viewing multiple cameras in a grid. This is to reduce the decoding overhead when you're decoding H.264 or H.265. Let's go down the different menu items. Now, the mainstream, again, is what gets recorded on the DVR, and you should only be recording this to save the highest resolution stream unless you have a need to record a substream, which we'll talk about in the recording methods video later on. The first thing is the channel. This is the camera number. So I am looking at channel one or camera one on my unit, which is the one in the background, and you can see it here. It may say cam one, it may say D1, it may say C1, it depends on the unit. The code stream type. They, there are multiple different streams that you could set encoding resolution for. Continuous means this is the recording resolution you'll record when you are either setting 24 seven recording, manual recording, or scheduled day and time-based recording. Motion detection, that's what MD stands for. It is the resolution you would be recording when your DVR senses motion detection. So in fact, you can set different resolutions for continuous and motion detection. So in order to optimize how much you're saving in bandwidth and in hard drive space, it gives you a lot of different options here. Alarm. If you have a DVR or NVR that has physical alarm inputs on the back, to tie in an external motion sensor. That's what this would pertain to. This is not the motion detection. This is just a physical alarm you tie in. Rarely would you be using this unless you're a pro user. So let's look at the continuous. That's what you really need to set. And do not change anything for the motion detection alarm settings from the default. Now compression. There are two types of compressions you could use main two types are H.264 and H.265. And it depends on the DVR or NVR's capability and the camera's capability. They have to sync. But we are just going to cover the regular H.264 because it's easier to decode for your computer when you back up footage as well. Because the more you compress the video, the more CPU power it takes to unpack it and play it back on your computer. Resolution. The resolution that you select here the maximum value you select is equal to the sensor size of your camera. So what that means is, in this case, this is a four megapixel camera that I'm looking at. The maximum resolution I can select is a four megapixel, which is here, 2688, 1520. And usually it's also referred to as 2K, which is 2560 by 1440. You can select three megapixel, 1080p, Super XGA, 1.3 or 720p. Now the maximum value that you would see here depends on your NVR and your camera. In this case, we are using an NVR that is capable of supporting up to five megapixel and also supports you know, anything underneath. So four megapixel, three, two, one. So I can see my full four megapixel video. Let's say you take a 12 megapixel camera and try to connect it here you would not be able to use it at 12 megapixel because this NVR doesn't support that. So your camera and your DVR or NVR have to be able to talk to each other and be compatible with each other for the resolution. Now, if I had a 12 megapixel camera, I could log into it if it's an IP camera and tune it down or downsample it and put it at let's say four or five megapixel and use it with this NVR. In your case, you should set the resolution for the mainstream accordingly to your discretion. I want to use the full power of my camera and I'm going to leave it at 1520. Frame rate. This is the number of frames per second the camera will record. It depends on the camera itself if it's an IP camera and then uh, for a DVR, it depends on the DVR itself. 
for an IP camera, the IP camera does the encoding and sends the stream. So it has to have the capability to record you know, the 10, 20, or 30 frames per second. This four megapixel camera only maxes out at 20. That's how most of them are. Unless you're buying a high-end H.265 camera with a higher clock processor. The NVR uh, does not do the encoding. It just takes the stream and records it. If you have a DVR, it is not the camera that does the encoding, it is the DVR. The cameras over coax act like a pair of eyes, send video to the DVR, which converts analog video to digital and records it. So the DVR needs to be able to record that certain frames per second you're looking for. They come in all different shapes and sizes, come in for different resolutions, different frame rates, so you have to check the specs when you're purchasing. And the bitrate. CBR means constant bitrate and VBR means variable. If you choose variable, you could have an issue of low quality video. In order to maintain a certain quality video, we suggest using CBR and to also make sure you can forecast how much data you're recording to your hard drive in a certain time frame. Use CBR, which is constant, and then select a bitrate. The bitrate is actually the amount of data that gets written to the hard drive per second. In our write-up, we recommend for different resolutions and frame rates and encoding compression methods, what bitrate to use to get the best bang for the buck. If you set a value that's too low, you're gonna get bad video. Or if you set a value that's too high, you're gonna get diminishing returns where after a certain point, it makes no difference. Increasing the bitrate doesn't improve the quality picture. You need to actually step up to a better camera to see farther away. So let's go over this again. So the first thing is you select the channel number. Obviously I have a four channel unit that I'm doing this video on so I can select from four different cameras. And I can set different resolutions for each and toggle them for all these different values. Code stream type should be continuous that you're setting this for unless you're an advanced user and you wanna go in and start changing the motion detection stream. Usually whatever you do on the continuous will also pass on to the motion detection stream as well. The compression. Depending on your camera, you would select what compression method to use. This is how much pixelation you'll get in the video depends on mainly the bitrate, not the compression. This is just the method of compression. Resolution. This is the picture size. So if you're using a four megapixel camera, you can zoom in farther away, let's say up to 40 feet, versus a 1080p camera up to 20 feet to see facial detail. The frame rate is how quickly the picture moves. As in the background, you see these cars passing. This is 20 frames per second. If I were to make this, let's say five frames per second, you'll see a pronounced difference there. So you can toggle that to whatever you're liking is. So what is the best bitrate to use? Go with the table that we have in our write-up. So there are really three to four main things to look at when you're in this encode menu. The compression method you're using, make sure it's compatible with your camera and your DVR. The resolution should equal to the resolution of your camera. Frame rate, depending on how much frames you want to record, how fluid the video you want it to be, you can choose from anywhere from 1 to 20 or 1 to 30 depending on your camera's capability. All of our NVRs do support 30 FPS. The only reason you don't see 30 FPS on this is because this IP camera does not do 30 FPS at 4MP. Usually, 4 megapixel, 5 megapixel, and 8 megapixel, and 12 megapixel cameras do not do 30 FPS at their reference resolution, at their sensor resolution. They can be stepped down and do 30 FPS at a different lower resolution. Leave bitrate alone as CBR, and then the bitrate. Usually we use about four megabits. 4096 means four megabits. One megabit is 1024. If you multiply by two, it becomes 2048. That's two megabits. This is four megabits, six megabits, eight megabits, and 10 megabits. Four megapixels should be four megabits. Hit apply, and then you can press okay when you're done. Now, the other thing to look at is on the bottom, although this is grayed out, certain cameras have audio features. You can check this box if your camera happens to have a microphone built in or the ability to add an external microphone to enable audio on the mainstream and audio on the substream. Now let's look at the substream. If you have a very poor internet connection where you're going to be viewing your DVR from when you're outside of that internet connection, you want to lower down this value. What this value tells you is when you're viewing one camera off-site, it's going to take one megabit for this channel. So is it going to take half a megabit for this one? 
another half a megabit. And this one is a quarter megabit. 256 kilobits per second is quarter megabit. So let's say you only have a one megabit upload speed and you have a poor internet connection because it's a DSL from somewhere. So how would you be able to view even four cameras with that? In this setup I have, I wouldn't be able to because if I want to view four cameras at a time, I would need about 2.25 megabits. You've got a quarter here, a half on these two and one. So you've got two plus half plus half plus a quarter. That's two, two and a quarter. So how would I do this? I would go back here and lower down the resolution to something where if I lower down the bitrate, it's not going to become very poor quality. Choose H.264, choose SIF, choose let's say five frames per second, and then set it to 256 and hit apply. Now this allows me to get some decent picture viewing offsite. Let's go to channel two. Same thing, I would apply that manually. and keep on going. So now I've got 256 kilobits per second, which is a quarter megabit. If you multiply by four, that's one. Let's say if I have a one to two megabit per second connection, when I'm outside the internet connection, I'll be able to see good decent quality video, the most I can do with the internet connection I've got. One warning though is, let's say you decide to put this at 2688 and lower it to a very low value. What will happen is you're forcing the DVR to take a lot of data and squeeze it into the bitrate. The bitrate is how much data is getting written. Here our reference bitrate is 1792 to 10240. I usually stay in the middle of these numbers. If you make it the lowest, it's gonna be the poorest quality video you've seen. And although it'll be a large resolution, you can't really see that far. So be careful in what you're setting. On the substream, you can set whatever you like. If you're not recording it, it doesn't matter. It's just for remote viewing purposes. You can also easily apply a set of settings you put on one camera to other cameras, as long as they have the same capabilities by using the copy function and then hitting either individual channel numbers and hitting all and then pressing okay.